Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to transform a face into a porcelain doll look. Before we begin, I want to mention that this tutorial utilizes features from Adobe's current version of Photoshop that's included in the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan. For a limited time, my viewers can receive a 20% discount when you subscribe or upgrade to this plan. It's only $7.99 per month. Click the link in my video's description to get the discount. Open a photo of someone you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock.com. The first step is to make a selection around your subject so we can separate it from its background. To do this, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using this tool as well, the best amount for the radius will depend on the size and resolution of your image. Drag the tool over your subject to select it. To make sure you selected all of it, press Q to make the selection into a quick mask. To revert it back into a selection, press Q again. Click the Refine Edge button, or go to Select and Refine Edge. I did an in-depth tutorial on Refine Edge, so if you'd like to watch it, its link is below in the video's description. Check Smart Radius and drag the radius a little to the right. Drag your tool over the edge of your subject's hair and release. Make sure Decontaminate Colors is checked and drag the amount to approximately 80%. Output it as a new layer and click OK. Next, we'll make the eyebrows thinner and straighter. Open your lasso tool and draw a selection around one of the eyebrows. Go to the other eyebrow and press and hold Shift as you draw another selection around that eyebrow. Press Ctrl J on Windows or Command J on a Mac to cut and copy the eyebrows to its own layer. Let's name the layer Eyebrows. Click off the eyeball icon next to the eyebrows to hide the layer. Click the thumbnail of the cutout subject to make it active. Open your patch tool and make a selection around one of the eyebrows. Drag the tool to an empty area of the skin like the forehead. The patch tool is like combining the healing brush with the lasso tool. To deselect it, press Ctrl or Command D. Draw around the other eyebrow and drag its selection to the same area of the skin. Then deselect it. Make the eyebrows layer visible and active. Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to the top middle point, and when you see a vertical double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag the transform down approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return. If you see hard edges around the eyebrows, that will disappear once we add filters later. Make the cutout subject active and control click or command click on the new layer icon to make a new layer below the active layer. We'll fill the empty layer with white, but first, if your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since your background color is white, press control or command plus delete. Make a copy of the active layer by pressing control or command J. Reduce the opacity of the copy by 50%. Make the original white layer active and go to Filter and Lens Correction. Click the Custom tab and drag the vignette amount all the way to the left. Click OK. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, make the top layer active 
and scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel. Shift click on the bottom layer to make all the layers active. Click the icon at the top right corner and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. I'll make the radius and threshold both 10 pixels, however, depending on the size and resolution of your image, you may want to play with these amounts to approximate the surface blur in this example. Go back to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Distort folder and click Diffuse Glow. I'll make the glow amount 2 and the clear amount 14, but again, feel free to play with these amounts to approximate this example. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Make the saturation minus 50. Next, we'll replace back the saturation in the lips. First, we'll zoom into it. Press Z to open your Zoom tool and drag it over the lips. Open your Brush tool and Brush Picker. Make the size between 5 and 10 pixels and the hardness 0%. Then, press Enter or Return. Make sure the opacity is 100%. Invert the colors by pressing X on your keyboard. Now, black is your foreground color. Brush over the lips to restore back their original saturation. To fit your image back onto your canvas, press Ctrl or Command-0. If the lips don't have lipstick on them, I'll show you how to give them a rich red color. First, click the Adjustment Layer icon again, and this time, click Color Balance. We want to replace the layer mask of Color Balance with the same layer mask of Hue Saturation. To do this, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of the Hue Saturation layer mask over the Color Balance layer mask. If you see this message, click Yes to replace the layer mask. Invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Click the Color Balance icon. In Midtones, I'll make the Cyan Red 50, and I'll do the same in Shadows. Keep in mind, since every photo is different, feel free to experiment with these amounts. To add back some color saturation to the hair, make the Hue Saturation Layer Mask active, and reduce the opacity of the brush to 50%. Then, press Enter or Return. To make your brush bigger, press the right bracket key on your keyboard. Then, brush over the hair. Next, we'll make the color of the eyes more vibrant. Make the Color Balance Adjustment Layer active, and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Solid Color. Pick a darker shade of the color you want for the eyes, and then click OK. Change the Blend Mode to Soft Light. Make the Layer Mask active, and invert it. Invert the foreground and background colors, so white is your foreground color. Reduce the size of your brush, and brush over the irises to reveal their color. Next, we'll smooth out the hair. Scroll down and double-click the Smart Object layer to open its source. Make your subject active. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to your subject. Make sure your foreground color is black. Make your brush smaller and brush over the edge of the hair to remove flyaway and stray hairs. When you're done, close the tab of the Smart Object, and when you see this message, 
Click Yes to save the changes. Next, we'll exaggerate the features to give it more of a doll-like look. Scroll to the top of the Layers panel and make the top layer active. Scroll to the bottom and shift-click on the bottom layer to make all the layers active. Then, convert all the layers into a smart object. Go to Filter and Liquify. We'll be using two Liquify tools, Pucker and Bloat. First, click the Bloat tool. To size your tool, either press the right bracket key to approximate the size shown here, or slide the size slider. Make sure your tool is centered over one of the eyes, and gently click once or twice. If you overdid the effect, press Z on your keyboard, or click the Restore All button, which will undo all the liquify effects. Click once or twice over the other eye until it matches the size of the first eye. Click the Pucker tool and make it approximately this size. Center it over the nose, mouth, and chin and gently click once or twice. Make the tool a little smaller and click on your image to make those features as small as you want. Then click OK. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.